In this lesson, we will talk about what causes choppy playback and some ways to fix this problem. So I'm just starting off here in 09 underscore begin, and this is going to be the file that we're going to be working with for kind of troubleshooting some of these playback issues. Now, first off, I want to show you a video that kind of has this choppy issue. So I'm just going to play this for you. And you can kind of see how it feels like there's something missing in between each of these frames. And this can be attributed to several different factors. There's a lot of reasons that can cause this. But one of the most common reasons is that your computer actually just doesn't have enough memory to play the file. So many times when you play really large files back on laptops especially, you can get these types of results where it just looks really choppy like this. So if not having having enough memory is the problem for your choppy playback, there's two things you can do. You can either get a computer that has more RAM, which can get expensive, or you can render out a smaller, possibly slightly more compressed file. So there's no way for me to go over all the different ways that you can render files to be smaller. So I'm just going to go over a few. So I'm going to go ahead and take that video down. And then we're going to be working with this file here. And I'm choosing this one because this would be a file that if you rendered it out with just some default settings, it would be huge. There's a lot going on here. We have a lot of motion blur. We have lights and lots of gradients, different transparencies a lot of different kinds of little pixels all blending together to give us a pretty complex image. We also have a camera that's moving through our whole scene so it feels like really every time every single pixel is going to change. So those are going to have a tendency to give you some of the heaviest file sizes once you render those out. So whenever I am working with a sequence like this, usually I won't even try to play with the sound at all if I'm trying to edit this. And that way I can edit it out as a sequence first. So whenever you edit out as a sequence, it's simply going to chop up your entire video into little pictures and render each one out individually for each frame. So what I usually use is a PNG sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my render queue and we'll go ahead and look at how you would render it out as a PNG sequence. So I'm just right here in my main composition. I'm ready to send it to the render queue. I'm going to come up here to composition add to render queue and that's going to just put it right there in the render queue and I will just go ahead and leave this at best settings for now you could come in here and turn those down a little bit but I want to show you the best way to render this out without losing um, information at least in this PNG sequence phase so we'll come up here to where it says lossless and then where you see format AVI I'm going to drop that down and we'll come down here to PNG sequence and I'm going to choose that now the default option that you have set up here are going to work just fine for this PNG sequence. So with this, I'm not going to be able to use any audio. So if you did have audio, it wouldn't be able to render out with a PNG sequence. So go ahead and set OK. And then we'll go ahead and click this and tell it where we want this to record to. Okay, so I've just navigated to the footage folder that we already have inside of our project files. So normally, if you did any of the earlier lessons where we used this world bounce, this has a sequence in it as well. So whenever I'm creating a sequence, I like to create a folder for that sequence because of how many little individual files it will spit out. So I'll go ahead and create a new folder, and we can just call this one boxes and light and we can name this as well for the file names if you want to so I can go ahead and name that the same thing boxes and light and then go ahead and go inside that folder just so you're all the way in there click save and then you can go ahead and hit render and that's going to render the work area that I have selected and you'll notice that it's going pretty slowly because it's going to have to render out each of those frames individually so I'm going to pause this while we wait for this to render out and then we're going to come back once this is finished rendering and we'll bring it into our project and I'll show you what you can do from there 
Okay, so our PNG sequence has finished rendering, and now I'm ready to go ahead and re-import it over here to my project panel. So just come over here to the project panel, right click, go to import file, and I'm just right there inside of that boxes and light uh, folder that we created. So I'm just gonna choose the first one in the list, make sure PNG sequence is checked, and then we'll go ahead and say open. And that's going to bring that up over here in our project panel. So I want to open this up in a new composition. So I'm just going to drag it down here and drop that on the create a new composition button. And that's basically going to be exactly what I created in my other file in my main composition. But now it doesn't have a whole bunch of layers to deal with. It's already been rendered out. And now you can see how quickly a RAM preview is processing for this. So already that's going to make it a lot easier to work with. Now, one of the things that I want to make sure of is that it's exactly the same speed as my other um, composition, that main comp. So I'm going to come up here to my composition settings and just double check. It looks like it's interpreting the frame rate of this footage at the default 30 frames per second. But I created this at 24 frames per second. So I'm going to come in here and drop that down to 24 frames per second for this comp. And then I'm also going to grab this piece of footage and we'll interpret it at 24 frames per second. So right click the PNG sequence that you imported, go to interpret footage main, and we'll change the assume this frame rate as 30 frames per second to 24. And then I'll go ahead and say OK to that. And we may need to extend the length of, of this comp a little bit just because it was too short whenever it was going at the speed of 30 frames per second. So you can come back up there into your composition settings. And let's just change this to 15 seconds. That's probably going to be too long. but. I just want to be able to see that and then we can crop it back down. So this is ending just right after seven seconds. So to crop this work area back down to the length of this footage, I'm just going to hold shift with my current time indicator so that it pops onto that last frame. And then I'm going to hit the N key to crop that work area to my current time indicator. Then I'll right click the current time indicator and hit trim comp to work area. So that's just going to give me the comp size and duration that I need for this particular clip. And now it's been interpreted at the right rate. So now if you wanted to, you could come in here and add anything else that you might want to change maybe on top of this if you wanted to add any compositing effects. But at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and re-render this out in a form that I can watch on my computer. A PNG sequence is not going to be the easiest way for you to watch on your computer unless you're using certain types of players. So let's go ahead and re-export this as a different file type. So we'll come up here to composition with our composition selected and hit add to render queue again. And usually I only like to have one thing in the render queue whenever I'm just kind of going through this format. So I'll go ahead and delete what's already been rendered out. And then let's come in here to our lossless. And instead of AVI, I'm going to choose H264. Now, H264 is what I'm choosing because that is one of the best file types to be played on either a Mac or a PC. It's usually going to be compatible with pretty much everybody. So I really like to use that one. Now, if you want to really get technical, you can come in here to your format options and kind of look at what you have as your bitrate settings. Now, without getting too technical, usually the higher this number is the longer it's going to take to render and the higher quality the render is going to be. That being said, you don't need to crank this all the way out there to the highest uh, value that you could get and then end up having a big file size again. Usually for me, whenever I do a variable bitrate, which is this VBR one pass, I'll go for a five as my target bitrate and a maximum bitrate of 10. So that gives me kind of a window there that it can go back and forth between and usually gives me a very decent file size. So you can go ahead and choose those settings there. I'm just going to leave everything else at it as it is. And then we'll go ahead and say OK to that. Now if you have audio, you would want to go ahead and check your audio output there. So I'll say OK and then come over here to my output too. And instead of 
outputting that right into that same boxes and light folder that my PNG sequence went into. I'm just going to go up a folder and then we'll render it right here into our footage folder for our project files. And this one I'm not going to change the name of. I can still call it boxes and light because now the extension is going to be a .mp4 instead of a .png like it was earlier. So now you can go ahead and hit save and render and you can see how fast this is rendering through. It's going really quickly simply because we pre-rendered that as our PNG sequence. Another reason why you might wanna re want to render it in the first place as a PNG sequence, if you have something really complex, sometimes your renders can crash. And so if it crashes about halfway through, you can re-add it to your render queue with the last frame that it crashed at. So you're not having to waste time re-rendering over and over trying to get it to render all the way through. So now we have our file finished rendering and I can show you what the playback looks like now with that H.264. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and open that up for you and we'll play that. And you can see that the playback is very smooth and it doesn't have any kind of choppiness really at all. So I can just have that playing over and over again and you can kind of watch that through much different from that first clip that we watched. So if these settings are still too high for you, you can go ahead and you could render this out maybe at a smaller size. I rendered this out at 1280 by 720. So now that wouldn't be really the same size that you were working at, but if you render that out at half size, it's going to be a little bit smaller and going to be easier to play, especially if you're trying to play it on a computer that doesn't have a lot of get up and go. So there's lots of ways for you to change that and this is really one of my favorite ways and usually gives me pretty desirable results. So in this lesson we learned some of the ways that rendering can help us to avoid choppy playback when you're trying to play it back on a system that might not be running as fast as you need it for playing back large files.